Welcome to the Short Score, the Team Roping Journal's weekly updates from the team roping world, including from Pro Rodeo, Major Jackpots, USTRC, and World Series of Team Roping Qualifiers, and more, with hosts Chelsea Schaefer and Caitlin Gustav. Hey, Caitlin. Hey, Chelsea. Hey, everybody. Welcome to the Short Score. It is Tuesday by the time y'all are listening to this. We're recording it Monday. We just got off the phone with Jake Long, who won the Kissimmee, Florida Ram National Circuit Finals Rodeo with Clay Smith. And those guys have been so hot all year. And we talk about it with Jake a little bit. But we looked at the standings and couldn't believe kind of how far down they were. Not that they were doing terrible. They were still in the top 10 in the world. But they had about 29,000 won. But there's so much money that counts towards the world standings this year that they were a little further down. So with that said, we will have a lot more about Clay Smith and Jake Long here later in the episode when we talk to Jake. But in the meantime, Caitlin, you want to give us an update from the rest of the rodeo world? Sure. In Arizona at Cave Creek, Tom Richards uh, was heading for Nick Sarche. They won that rodeo. They were first with a 4.7 run, uh, adding a little over 2000 to their earnings. But then in the Texas circuit, we had Tyler McKnight. He's kind of been looking for a header. I knew that. Yeah, I don't know if he's settled down with this Tanner Tomlinson or not, but glad to see Knight Rider getting a win. Mm-hmm. So that was exciting. Yeah, two wins, in fact. Yeah, they won Tyler, Texas. They won that with a 4.6 second run, and then they won third at Beaumont, Texas with a 5.5 second run. Okay, so. glad to see Tyler picking up some circuit money, doing some good. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's awesome. Uh, and then we had, again, at Tyler, Texas, in Beaumont, Texas, we had Lightning, Aguilera, and Ty Arnold. They won third at Tyler with a 5-0, and they won first at Beaumont with a 3.8. It's funny that those two teams kind of switched. Yeah, yep. they swapped at the rodeos. So some circuit money there. Uh, then we had Tyler Waters and Brady Norman, and they won a rodeo and placed at another rodeo, uh, kind of in that Texas circuit again. So lots of circuit money being won this weekend. Or this past weekend. Yeah, very good. Very good. And then when we talk about what is going on at the World Series, we've got to talk about JX2. Um, John Johnson, he had the South Georgia qualifier. They paid a lot of money out to those guys in Georgia. John has had roping after roping after roping this last couple months. People in the South are really excited about their roping in the wintertime, kind of just like they are in Arizona out here. So anyway, glad to see John's roping's going over so well. I saw Tish Luke got another win. She's always one of our go-to girls that we put on our website mm-hmm. um, talking about how awesome she ropes and, and watching her. So we're glad to see her get a win in the 10 and a half World Series qualifier. Hey, before we forget to mention, the USTRC, um, they are cranking up their social media presence. So make sure you follow USTRC on Facebook for news and updates from Ropens. And then check them out on Instagram. USTRC official is their handle. Go ahead, go follow that. Make sure that way you can kind of keep up to date with what's going on with the signature series, with all the different Ropens that they're getting ready to put on. Um, They've got a lot of changes happening, and then they're going to have... We have the schedule for the USTRC's uh, Cinch National Finals of Team Ropin. It's in the April issue of the Team Ropin Journal, so you're not going to want to miss that. Okay, guys, this weekend, I don't want you to forget all the awesome Ropins we've got going on with the World Series of Team Ropin. The Hamilton, Texas Qualifier, Shelly Productions, starts on Thursday, March 28th. Heber City, Utah, Double Dollar Ropin, that starts Friday, March 29th. A rescheduled rope in Mountain States Cattle Company's Eaton, Colorado qualifier. That's Saturday, March 30th. Dodge City, Kansas, Z rope in. That's Saturday, March 30th. Wickenburg, Arizona, Fuller Productions has a qualifier on Friday, April 5th. And the Homedale, Idaho qualifier starts on Saturday, April 6th. So don't forget those. You know, check WSTRRoping.com for the rest of the schedule. And we look forward to seeing you at a qualifier. Caitlin, you're going to Eaton, right? I will be there. You entered up? Just in the 12 this time. Caitlin's looking for runs from the 14 <laughs> on down. So if you um, know her number, shoot her a text <laughs> message. And she, she needs some runs. Enter up. <laughs> Enter up, cowgirl. <laughs> all right, everybody. Thank you all for listening. Uh, the, now I'm going to leave you with our interview with uh, Jake Long. He kind of gives us his opinion on all the money that's counting. Uh, talks a little bit about Colonel has amazing horse that we can't talk enough about. And talks about what it's like being in the position that he's in, roping all year, and, and kind of kicking butt and taking names. So uh, thanks, everybody. Talk to you soon. Hi, 
Hi, Jake. Hey, sorry, my phone was turned down. I didn't even know it rang. It's all good. What are you up to? I'm just running around town. Oh, you're not back practicing already? Are you giving yourself uh, the morning would, off? or? I would like to be practicing, but yeah, we're just uh, kind of running around, getting everything resettled, and then yeah. regroup. And I, I grew up at Austin Wednesday, so. Oh, gotcha. Okay. Well, when did you leave for Florida? How long were you in Kissimmee? I flew out there, uh, I flew out Monday or Wednesday morning. So I was there for five days, I think. Yeah. Gotcha. And so you, did you guys send Marty and Colonel in a trailer then? Who drove? Um, Shane, a friend of Ty Harris's, friend of the family. Mm-hmm. Uh, he drove out there for us and he, uh, he took care of everything and he's actually, I think he's about three hours from my house. So he left after we roped over there yesterday. Gotcha. Poor guy. We got to cheat. We got on the airplane. That's awesome. Did you guys do Disney World and this and all that? Did the kids get to have some fun or? Uh, Clay did. My family didn't get to go. They were on spring break last week, so I see. Uh, the the whole school deal got in the way. You'll have that for sure. Um, all right. Yeah. Well, walk me through your week there, as far as um, you know, th- throughout those rounds. How was it? How did you feel about how everything went? Uh, it was a lot of fun. Uh, you know, it went, went really good. The first round, we had a really good steer that, that had a little more momentum to him than the rest of the herd seemed like the first round. So we kind of got to just make a normal run. We were in the first perf, really didn't have any plans of trying to win the round or anything. We just made a good snappy run and then, you know, it worked out for us. And, uh, we come back in the second round and drew one that was really, really slow. And, and, uh, you know, we were trying just not to run over ourselves and, Maybe played it a little too cautious. I, I I didn't ride a very good corner. I had to take a couple extra swings to make sure I caught him. And we went six flat and, uh, you know, ended up winning second in the average there. And so that put us in a good spot coming back for that the eight round on Sunday. And then in the first round of the eight round, um, we drew the steer we had in the first round of the rodeo. Again. Oh, nice, yeah. And uh, we kind of just talked beforehand if it was – you know, if it got tough, we, we knew that steer would be good enough that we could be a little bit faster on him. And, you know, if it didn't get tough, then he was dang sure easy to just go make a nice run on him. Like I said, he, he had enough momentum and stuff to him that, uh, you know, he wasn't too tricky to get by. He's kind of low-headed. It was about the only bad thing, but uh, that didn't affect Clay none. And we, uh, the round got pretty tough, and that's what we talked about before we went in and decided we wanted to press the issue just a little bit. And, and uh that way we'd be in a good spot for that the four round if we you know made a good run and just made a really good run clay got him a good start and i got him healed fast and uh, you know got to split the round there and then with the average being the tiebreaker that made us last out the four round and and then uh you know the steers were pretty even in that in that set and we were last out had to be five four to win it and made a good run went four eight so that's awesome so now, have you looked – I mean, uh, the PRCA hasn't calculated – by the, when we're recording this, the PRCA hasn't calculated world standings yet. But 25,000, right? Is that what you won in Kissimmee? Roundabout? Yeah, 20, yeah, I think right at it. Yes, ma'am. 25,207. So, I mean, that's going to put you fourth in the world standings probably or or right up there, maybe, maybe third. That's pretty crazy this time of year for having, oh, you know – Upwards of fifty thousand one, fifty almost to sixty thousand one, and you aren't winning the world. How crazy is how all of this is working this year? Well, it is. It's, it's insane. That's what um, you know. With the American and Houston paying fifty thousand for purse, it's uh, it's nice to close the gap a little bit. I I dropped the ball for us at, at both those rodeos, so uh, you know it was nice to kind of take advantage of the last the last chance at big money really until mm-hmm. until the summertime i mean uh we still get to go into austin and you can clip them pretty good there but uh you know it, it was good we we didn't really win a ton at san antonio we, we we've done really well but we hadn't hit at one of the really really big spots yet and so it was kind of nice to to finally hit at one of them where you can really accumulate a lot of money for the standings and and uh 
and like I said, close the gap a little bit and be within striking distance a little bit and not feel like it's going to take forever to catch up to everybody. Yeah, as good of a year as you've had, I was surprised to see when I looked that you had 29,001 and were kind of as far back. I just can't believe all that money that's at the top of the standings right now and that counts. It's probably pretty exciting, I guess, being a rodeo cowboy and knowing that you have a shot at that now that's all going to count for the world standings. Do, are you a fan of all that counting? Uh, honestly, no. No? <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, I mean, my opinion is the the money was always there. Yeah. I mean, it didn't. It didn't. It didn't change the fact that we were open for the money. It just now it, you know, I, I don't necessarily like when you start playing with NFR bursts and world titles and stuff based off of one hit wonders, kind of like on that stuff. But yeah, by the same token, I was entered in both rodeos and had just as good a chance to win as anybody. So, uh, you know, I, I'm not a fan from the standpoint of, you know, I, I like going head to head and earning a little more, but. With that being said, Kissimmee probably shouldn't count either. So, uh, you know, I I was able to take, take advantage of a spot um, where not everybody even gets to enter. So if it was up to me, honestly, I, I'd i probably not have any of that stuff count. Of the big stuff count? Huh. Yeah, yeah and I remember uh, when they were talking about it years before, that was kind of always the the argument that that, wasn't, that was why all that stuff didn't count. But it's kind of... It's, uh, I mean... It is what it is as far as all that stuff counting. It's like I said, mm-hmm. it's thing kind of whatever the rules are. You just got to show them to your job. And like I said, I, you know, I, I had as good a chance to do it good at them other ones too. And I dropped the ball, and the guys that won it came through in the clutch. And and you know, it's like playoff football or anything and anything else. I mean, it's, it's about like the NFR paying like it does as far yeah. as winning the year end. I mean, you know, the the regular season. I mean, it feels like it doesn't even matter in a way. I mean. So it's like all them other sports. I mean, you can kind of limp your way into the playoffs and if you get hot at the right time. So, Yeah. Are you going to give Colonel any time off between now and the summer, or is he going to kind of go to Austin and, and hit, go to Cal? Are you guys going to California? Tell me about what the plan is for this kind of downtime. Uh, we're actually going to skip California. Uh, it's the first time I've skipped it in several years. Mm-hmm. and uh, So he'll go to Austin and then – he really won't go anywhere. I mean, he'll probably only go to two or three rodeos from now till Reno. So he'll get he'll get a lot of time off. There's there's uh, there's a big roping that uh, in Buffalo, Texas here in like a week, and so he'll go to that. And but no, he'll get he'll get a lot of resting done, and then he'll be ready to roll when BFI and Reno rolls around. Awesome. What kind of vetting are you guys doing with him? What kind of TLC is he needing this time of year, or you know, this time in his life? I guess this point in his career. You know, we've been so blessed with him. He he really doesn't require much. He gets injected about once a year, and, and uh, that's what Charlie Buchanan over there at Brazos Valley he kind of he kind of picks on me a little bit. He says he's not very good for business because he's so durable. But uh, <laughs> it's he, he's been he's been so awesome, and and we've been so lucky. He's never really had any major issues. He's had one abscess that kept him out for a day at the finals one time, and. Um, you know, he got a little bit of foot sore one time uh, that took him about two or three days to get over. So, uh, you That's know, awesome. as far as all that, he really, I honestly, I just turn him out and pet him and feed him and try to ride him a little bit here and there. And, uh, that's about it. it. It really, he don't require a whole lot of TLC. That's awesome. Good to hear it. <laughs> well, thank you very yeah. much, Jake. I appreciate it. I will let you get back to your errands. <laughs> okay. Yes, ma'am. Y'all, uh, y'all have a good day. You too. Bye, Jake. All right, guys, hope you guys enjoyed that interview with Jake Long. I know we did. I was quietly sitting here while Chelsea talked to Jake, and it was very interesting. Yeah, that's it, everybody. I told Caitlin to sign off, but she's nervous. I'm just not great at this. (laughs) Okay, everybody, thank you all. Talk to you soon.